Sometimes ads leave me wondering, why did I spend $29.99 on this piece of junk? Other times, I just want to know how they created such a cool commercial. Prepare to be amazed by the secrets behind the making of the 10 smartest video adverts. Amazing. Number 10. Filming Underwater Ads When Skoll, a Brazilian alcohol manufacturer, came out with their new Beat Senses beer in a deep blue bottle, they wanted to do something aquatic themed to celebrate. The Brazilian office of Saatchi & Saatchi helped them develop a concept for an underwater dance party, all of which they had to shoot for real. Producing 60 seconds of any kind of video often means hours of work, but underwater shooting is even more complicated. The agency created a script with no dialogue, but interesting characters and details, including a guy who floats bottles of beer to his friends and a woman walking a shark on a leash, as you can see here. The commercial was shot in Sao Paulo, using a set that was built 15 feet underwater. The actors wore weights so they could move around underwater without floating toward the surface. In case of any problems, there were divers and scuba equipment positioned just off camera so they could assist anyone who ran into trouble. Director Jonathan Gervitz specifically cast divers and synchronized swimmers because he wanted people who looked relaxed and natural underwater. He used a regular camera in a special waterproof case and communicated with the actors using an aquatic speaker. Meanwhile, British film company Pinewood Studios has been known to make some ads that are all wet, literally. They've shot everything from James Blunt plunging into water to advertise an award show to this rugby ad. Number 9. Honda Cog TV Ad This Honda ad also has no dialogue and takes almost two minutes to turn the individual pieces of a Honda into a very strange-looking, elaborate game of dominoes. Ad agency WNK hired pop video director Antoine Bardot Jacquet for the video, which begins with the humble cog kicking off the chain reaction, as you can see here. Even without dialogue, the complex staging and perfectly choreographed routine is mesmerizing to watch. It's no wonder it took seven months to make and reportedly cost a million British pounds. If I took my car apart, not only could I never get the pieces to do anything like this, I don't think it would even start up after I put it back together. And who doesn't like a good cake? Unfortunately, you can't dig into the one advertisers created for Skoda cars. Over four days, bakers and bricklayers worked together to create a life-size Skoda car. Then the ad was set to Julie Andrews' My Favorite Things. Not being able to take a bite of that cake is driving me crazy. Number 8. Subservient Chicken In 2004, Burger King was hoping to increase their market share of their new Tender Crisp Chicken Sandwich. At the same time, they wanted to revive their previously popular Have It Your Way campaign, so they decided to focus on customizing the chicken sandwich. Then things got a little weird. They settled on creating an interactive subservient chicken character. A chicken who will do anything for customers online, from putting on garters to dancing. In one ad promoting the subservientchicken.com site, a man is seen thumbing through pictures and telling the chicken what clothes to wear. The site was set up to look like a seedy sex site webcam and programmed with 300 different commands. Many viewers, including a friend of advertiser CPNB CEO, actually thought the chicken character was responding to requests in real time, but it was just programmed and executed seamlessly, so viewers could watch the chicken do whatever they wanted if they weren't too, well, chicken to visit the site. Number 7. Marks & Spencer's Food Campaign Moving on to a different type of food porn, Marks & Spencer's, an upscale food retailer from the UK, is known for its drool-worthy ads that focus on the mouth-watering lines of food they carry. Here's how they created some of those shots. The lemon ballet, shown here, was created by hanging lemons on a fine thread, then moving them to the top of the frame so the thread isn't visible. Then they flicked the lemons to make them move, slowed the speed down, and flipped the frame upside down so the lemons appear to be spinning on their own. But the toughest trick was making a hamburger patty roll perfectly into some spices. They didn't use any strings or tricks, but painstakingly kept rolling the burger until it landed right. The herbs had to be rearranged after every take. Looks delicious, but how about those exploding strawberries? They simply put a strawberry between two pieces of glass and squashed it, the same way they did the cranberries and pomegranate. That's some fine food advertising. Number 6. I'd Like to Buy the World a Coke I'd Like to Buy the World a Coke is one of the most iconic ads of all time, but it almost didn't happen. 
And no, it's not because Don Draper missed his bus to the ashram. In 1971, Bill Backer was creative director for the Coca-Cola account at McCann Erickson. A London fog forced his plane to land in Ireland, where he observed people were understandably crabby after being detoured. But the next day, most of the passengers were talking, laughing, and sharing stories in the airport cafe over bottles of Coca-Cola. Inspired, he decided Coke was a great way to bring people from all walks of life together, and he shared his idea with his co-worker, Billy Davis. I'd like to buy the world a Coke, he happily announced. Davis set out he'd rather give the world peace and love. Hey, it was the 70s. They decided to combine the ideas and make an ad where people from all over the world came together with peace and love while drinking a Coke. Unfortunately, shooting the ad was anything but peaceful. Rainstorms chased the crew all over Europe, washing out one shoot after the next. After casting people in Britain, they were rained out. Then they moved to Rome, where they managed to shoot some film, only to discover that happy, peaceful people all kind of looked like drowned rats. They were forced to scrap the film and try again, finally getting good shots at a racetrack in Rome. The whole thing cost $250,000 which doesn't sound like much compared to a modern Super Bowl ad, but in 1971, the amount was unheard of for shooting a commercial. Fortunately, it paid off when the ad became one of the most famous in history. Number five, hair commercials. I often wonder how models get their hair to look so amazing in commercials. It turns out things get pretty hairy behind the scenes, and that's not a joke. Models often lie down on a plank and nestle their head into a fan of fake hair that's glued to the board. When they get up, the hair stays behind, as seen here. In a new marketing campaign, Suave revealed this and other tricks of the trade, like pinning styrofoam balls to a model's head to create the look of volume. And don't forget the green screen fluffers. They dress in green to blend in with the screen. Then they stand on either side of the model and fan her to create the illusion of wind blowing in the ad. Number four, Old Spice Ads. There's nothing like an Old Spice ad to remind me that I'm not, well, the Old Spice guy, and I can't fly or do exciting tricks. Actually, neither can the Old Spice guy, as you see here. It turns out these ads are targeted at women because the deodorant company's ad agency realized women usually buy toiletries for the men in their lives. They wanted to create an ad that would speak to women without alienating male viewers. So the Man Your Man Could Smell Like campaign was born. Actor Isaiah Mustafa decided to take a Don Juan approach to the character in his audition, and the agency loved it. The spot was filmed continuously, with a minimum of computer-generated images, and required 38 takes over two days. They have since taken this format and created lots of variations on this initial success. Even Don Juan must be exhausted after that. Number 3. Burger Commercials Burger commercials make even an inexpensive fast food patty look delicious. But behind the scenes, it takes a lot of work to get that shot of the ingredients falling together perfectly on the bun. Just look at this real-time behind-the-scenes video of a burger ad. That enormous metal contraption, along with carefully placed rubber bands, hold all the ingredients at separate heights. A mechanical arm slices the strings, freeing the burger, the tomato, the lettuce, the bacon, and the top bun to bounce onto the bottom bun. But don't forget the ketchup and mustard. Those are thrown together with a catapult so they can look tantalizing on screen too. Slow it all down and it looks like perfection. Before I reveal the next example, I'd like to remind you to subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. We upload amazing fact-filled list videos daily. Also, make sure to click that bell icon to stay updated or you'll regret missing out on some amazing knowledge that could have filled your brain. Now let's get back to it. Number two, Evian Roller Babies ad. These popular Evian ads feature dancing and roller skating babies busting a move. Meant to show how Evian supports your body's youth, this ad shows toddlers roller skating around a park, leaping over each other, sliding down railings, and doing other moves babies aren't actually coordinated enough to pull off. Heck, neither am I. Take a look. Don't worry, the babies aren't actually doing any dangerous stunts. Evian used a variety of green screen and 3D CGI work to pull off the video. First, adult actors did the roller skating while wearing padded suits to make them look like, well, chubby babies. Later, the baby's face, which had been filmed against green screens, were added to the baby-like padded bodies doing the actual skating and dancing. Number one, Volvo splits. He actually did it for real. 
This Volvo viral video of Jean-Claude Van Damme doing the splits between two Volvo trucks driving down a road is one of the smartest ads ever created because it perfectly fits the theme of promoting Volvo's dynamic, stable steering. It's even more impressive when you find out it wasn't done with green screens or CGI. Van Damme actually did the splits between the two trucks as they slowly moved apart from each other. I don't know about you, but if I attempted that on the ground, I'd be sore for days. The video was shot on an unopened road in Spain, chosen because the director wanted as much straight road as possible. However, the driver still had to compensate for the road being slightly convex to allow rain runoff. Van Damme did have some wires on him just for safety, but they didn't affect the final stunt in any way and were easily removed in post-production. It hasn't been revealed where they were for definite, but there may have been a boom arm of some sort attached to the top of the truck secured to a torso harness, or the ropes could have been secured to the side of the truck. It also looks as if he was standing on little platforms above the side mirrors, but his feet weren't secured. Turns out, VW has been getting people's attention in an unexpected way since the 1950s when they introduced the Think Small campaign. Back then, the Volkswagen Beetle was thought of by Americans as a small, slow, ugly foreign car. Selling it to the American public was far from easy for ad agency DDB. They settled on using the car's weakness as a strength, bragging about how small and slow it was. The ad was simple, with just a picture of the car and the caption, Think Small above the fine print, which extolled the virtues of a slow car. It doesn't guzzle gas, burn up tires, or require a lot of repairs. The idea of smallness was played up with lots of white space in the ad. Which ad was your favorite? And are there any others you want to see deconstructed? Let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching.